What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing my Marin Hawk Hill 1. Alright, so this right here is my 2020 Marin Hawk Hill 1 in the purple colorway. I bought this bike for around 1500 bucks and it has been an amazing bike. So this bike is a 27.5 inch wheel. Uh, I've got the medium sized frame and it is considered to be a trail bike, trail enduro type bike with full suspension. All right, so starting off here with the cockpit, you see we've got some 780 millimeter Marin bars with a 28 millimeter rise. And for the grips, we have a set of ODI Pro lock-ons. Uh, the bike came standard with some black Marin slip-ons, but I switched those because they were moving around too much. And then moving along, you can see we have a FSA headset with a Marin stem. On the right side here, we've got our Shimano brake with a Shimano Dior shifter lever. And then on the left side, we've got our Shimano brake and our PNW Rainier dropper post lever. Uh, the dropper post is something that didn't come standard with this bike, but I did invest in one and I'm really glad I did. So yeah, that's about it for the cockpit. All right, so starting with the main thing up front, we've got a RockShox Recon RL fork with 120 millimeters of travel. The wheel set, we're running the basic Marin alloy rims with some Schwab 2.4 inch wide tires. And then for the brakes, we've got Shimano MT200 with 180 millimeter rotors, and that is the same front and back. Uh, same with the wheel set, same front and back. Except one thing I do have running different is I am tubeless in the front. I do have a tube in the back though still. All right, onto the back. Starting off with the fun stuff, we've got a 1x11 drivetrain with a Sunrise cassette, and then we've got a Shimano Dior derailleur running a KMC chain. We've also got the same wheel set as the front, Marin rims with the Schwab tires and then the MT200 brakes. Moving on to the cranks, we've got just basic Marin cranks, basic Marin pedals. These are actually amazing pedals. The pedals that come standard on this, I, I love them. Can't say anything bad about them. And then for the shock, we've got an X-Fusion O2 Pro R, which, I don't know. I've had some troubles with it, but it's not a terrible shock. Lastly, we've just got a Marin saddle with our PW Rainier dropper post. All right, onto the pros and cons. Now, I purchased this bike last year in April, so I've had about six and a half months of being able to ride it. So I'd say that pretty much if anything was going to go wrong with the bike, uh, it probably would have gone wrong by now. By far, the biggest pro of this bike is that the components you get for only $1,500 is insane. Finding a full suspension bike with great components from a trusted brand for that price is really good in my opinion. I've been searching, couldn't find anything else for that price. And I actually got this recommended to me by our local bike shop. Now the only con I have about this bike is the X-Fusion rear shock. Now I haven't had much problems with it, it's just not a great shock. But you know, for the price you pay, $1,500 for all of it, you're getting what you pay for pretty much. I do wish the shock was slightly better. Uh, if I upgrade another thing on this bike, that'll probably be the next thing I do because it's just not as smooth and you can't really adjust it real well. Adjusting it is really difficult. All right, so in conclusion, I'd say that if you're looking to upgrade from an entry level hardtail and you're ready to get into some heavier mountain biking, this is a great beginner full suspension mountain bike and I definitely recommend it. So if you want to see me riding this bike, you can go check out any of the other videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and if you want to see more content, hit subscribe.